It's just a different name for all of those things we've already done. So when two variable quantities have a constant ratio, remember constant means the same, their relationship is called a direct variation. So a lot of times you'll see it written down, something varies directly with something else. And so that tells you how you're gonna set up your ratio or your fraction. The constant ratio, ratio is like a fraction, is called the constant of proportionality. So like I said, constant of proportionality, it's really the same thing that we did yesterday, that constant rate of change. We're just seeing if two quantities they give us are proportional to each other. So on example one, we got a graph. The time it takes Lucia to pick pints of blackberries is shown in the graph. Determine the constant of proportionality. So when we're asked to solve that, we're doing the same thing we did yesterday and the day before. We are trying to find the change in y on top of the change in x. So for this specific graph we're looking at, we wanna see the change in minutes over the change in pints. So basically how many pints can we pick in so many minutes? So when you got that graph, they give us the points on there and I would pick two points that are closest to each other so I don't have to reduce as much. So on that first one, the first two points, my change in Y, I went from 15 to 30. So what is that change? What's that difference? Plus 15. Plus 15. 15 to 30 would be 15. So that goes on top. That's my Y change. That's my minutes. And then my X change, I went from one pint to two pints. So, like so, so that's just one. It's 15. So 15 over one or 15? 15. 15. 15 minutes to pick one pint of blackberries is what that means. Okay, now example two, there are 12 trading cards in a package, make a table and a graph, which they've already done for us, to show the number of cards in one, two, three, and four packages. Is there a constant rate? So does it change by the same amount each time? And is there a direct variation? So let's look at our table first. Your top row, if your table is laying on its side, on its belly like this, the top row is your X value and the bottom one is your Y value. So 12 over one. So yeah, my change in Y is still gonna go on top though when I write the ratio. And it's going 12 to 24, 24 to 36, 36 to 48. And that change was 12. On top of the change in your X value, one to two, three to four. So that's just a change of one. So there, what that means is there are 12 cards in one package. Okay, down at the bottom, we don't have a visual. It just gives us a story. Wilhelma bought six bars of soap for $12. The next day, Sophia bought 10 bars of the same kind of soap for $20. What is the cost of one bar of soap? So anytime there's money, we want to put that on top. So dollar signs on top of the bars of soap. If it cost $12 for six bars and it cost $20 for 10 bars. I'm going to write them both down and I'm going to solve for both of them just to make sure that it's the same. So if they're the same price for one bar. Two. So 12 divided by six is two. Over one. And 20 divided by 10 is two. Also two. Over one. Okay, so both of them, $2 for one bar of soap. That's pretty good. $2 for one bar. Next one, number two. Franklin is cooking a three pound turkey breast for six people. If the number of pounds of turkey varies directly with the number of pounds, number of pounds, the number of people, then make a table to show the number of pounds of turkey for two, four, and eight. So what I mean by earlier when I said it varies directly, they're telling you how to set up your ratio. So it says the number of pounds varies directly with the number of people. So that's how they want you to set up that ratio. Pounds of turkey on top, people on the bottom. So the pounds is my Y value, the people is X. Okay? 
So, so when we go to make my table, which they told us to do, they want us to figure out the table for two people, four, and eight. And I already know that six people can eat three pounds of turkey, right? For two people? So I have to fill in the rest of it. So we're going to set up... For two, it would be one. Portion. So if I already know that three pounds of turkey will feed six people, then I'm trying to see how many pounds of turkey can feed two people. We'll start with two. And y'all may have seen this last year, setting up those proportions. And y'all remember, or did you talk about the butterfly? Uh, yes, 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 yes. What's the butterfly? So the butterfly, you have to you're times cross. Two. We times those two. Like, yeah. So it'd be x times six it's equals one. three times two. And then you would x out of six, so you'd be, le be left with x. Okay. And then divide it, times those and divide it by six. Good. I think I heard it. Okay, yeah, I did hear it. So I say butterfly, cross multiplying is what you're doing. So you're cross multiplying those numbers across from each other. That's what that means. So six times x, we're going to write 6x. And then three times two is six. Okay? So then I'm going to solve for that missing, I don't know how many pounds can feed two people. But from here, I can divide it just like a one-step equation. One, two, three, four. One. And that's just one. One, two, three, four. Okay, so one pound of turkey will feed two people. And to fill in the rest of my table, I'm going to do the same thing. So I know that three pounds of turkey feeds six people. So how many pounds of turkey will feed four people? Two. Good. So I'm going to do the same thing. Cross multiply. So 6 times x is 6x, 3 times 4 is 12. So how many pounds of turkey will feed 4 people? 2, when we go and divide it. Okay, so now I've got enough here. I can see 1 pound for every two people. So on, over two. on the back, the tables they give us determine whether each relationship is a direct variation. If so, state the constant of proportionality. So if it changes by the same amount each time. And remember, yep, we gotta do our change in Y over the change in X. Y goes on top, X is on the bottom. So let's first look at the Y value, that's this miles here. So 120 to 240, and we can find that difference by subtracting them. So like 360 minus 300. 60. 60. 300 minus 240. 60. 60. 240 minus 180. 60. 60. 60. So my change in Y is 60. I can put that up there. That's my top number. And then my change in X. So 6 to 8. 2. 8 to 10. And then 10 to 12. So 60 over 2, and I want to make that smaller. I want to reduce that down or divide it, technically. So what's the constant of proportionality going to be? Um, it's going to be 60 um, divided by 2, 60 over 2. Good. 30 over 1 or just 30? Oh, they said 31. No, 30 what? over 1. So what that means is it's going to take 30 miles on 1 gallon. So I can go 30 miles on one gallon. I get you, Blake. Then on number four, on number four, same thing. I want my Y, the change in Y to go on top, change in X to go on the bottom. My change in Y, my temperature is going up just one degree each time. 82 to 83, 84 to 85. So my change in Y is one. Then my change in X, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, one. also going up by 1. So the answer would be 1. 1. And what that means is it's like changing 1 degree per every minute. Ooh. So the temperature is rising 1 degree every minute. One. OK, 
Okay, next one, number five. Same idea. We want to put our Y on top, X on the bottom. And we want to see that difference in our Y value. So since these are bigger numbers, off to the side somewhere, if you want to subtract them, work it out. 5250 minus 4000. 1,250. That'd be 1,250. And just to make sure they're the same, I'm gonna go ahead and do the next pair of numbers also. So 4,000 minus 2,750. And that's 1,250. So my change in Y looks like it's 1,250, and that's talking about dollars, some money. The X value is talking about the number of payments. So 21, or 6 to 11, the change is 5. 11 to 16, the change is 5. 5. Good. So it's $1,250 over 5 payments. So that's what it's going to cost for 5 payments. So how much is it going to cost for one payment? 250. Good. And how did you get that? By dividing five. Uh, I mean one, two, one, one thousand two, zero by five. Okay. By dividing the one thousand two hundred fifty by five. Perfect. So it's two hundred fifty for one payment. Okay. Now the graph again. The number of miles traveled varies directly with the number of hours. So miles and number of hours. So what is the rate of change? That word, same thing. We're doing the same thing. They're just asking for rate of change now, but remember that means the same. So I still wanna figure out what my change, my vertical change is over my horizontal change. So I'm gonna use that first little dot there. So what's your vertical change? It went from zero to 50, right? So my miles changed by 50. And then your change in X. Zero to one. Yep. So 50 miles in one hour or 50. Dustin's car can travel about 30 miles on one gallon of gas. Make a table to show the distance traveled after one, two, three, and four gallons of gas. Is there a variation? So the same thing, they already did our table for us. They didn't fill in the graph, so we can do that. Remember, that's your X value, that's our Y value. So one, 30 about. 30 over one. 260, yep. Three would be 90 and four. 120. So my change in Y is 30. Goes up by 30 each time. And my change in X is just 1. Plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. So it's 30, which is what they told you in the beginning. <laughs> 30 miles in one gallon. That's a lot.